Last week, a question was proposed to me. If you could only have one ax, what would it be? I didn't even have to think about it. It would be this one. This beautiful Scandinavian forest ax was a gift to me by my friend Babak in Canada. He sent this to me a couple weeks back in an email and said, you know, sometimes I feel like tools have a special, even have their own soul, and, and this ax wants to come to you. <laughs> and so I, I, I appreciate that, Babak. I don't know that tools have souls, but I do get where you're coming from and I understand it, but this is magnificent and what makes it one of the things that makes it so spe special and why it's so rare that if we look right here close you see look they see the lp that stands for lennart peterson that is well he's considered a, a, among in sweden among probably the finest axe forge in the country and he rarely does this model this is not typically you're not going to typically see an lp on your grand force brooks axe on the scandinavian forest axe it's just, uh, I, I've never seen one, never heard of him doing one like that. But uh, if you have something, so if you do have a Grand Force Brooks Axe with the LP on it, you have a special one. It's a special one. But is that not beautiful? And another thing that was kind of interesting, and I don't know if Babic did this or if it came from Grand Force that way, is you can see that it's got a polish on it. It's got, a, I mean, it's not a mere polish, but I can see my reflection on it. But isn't that beautiful? And even the sheath, the sheath has obviously been hand rubbed. It's been, it's been looked after. It's been, it, it has that, you know what it has? Every time I grab it, it has the feel of someone has loved it. Someone has taken very good care of it and has understood how special it is. It's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So the question is going to come up, well, wait a minute, you always say that you like the small forest axe, which of course I do right there. This has always been my favorite axe, the Grand Force Brook Small Forest Axe. This is the small one. This is the Scandinavian. This is the neck size up. And if you want to go one bigger than this, you're going to go to the American Felling Axe. If you wanted the one, two, three, perfect combination of axes, if I, if I, I, I would get rid of everything that I own and I would be content and happy with that. That would be a wonderful combination. So if you're going to ask, so which one do you like better? It's not about liking one better than the other. It's about if I could only have one. So if I could only have one and I, would, I could recommend it to, to you or to anyone else, why would I choose this one? It's because of its versatility. I don't care who you are. If you are a 90 pound female, if you are a, an 85 pound 13 year old boy, if you are a 225 pound um, big lumberjack type, you can comfortably swing this ax. It does everything. It's not so heavy that it fatigues smaller users or, or someone that's not, not in really good shape yet. You can go out and you can safely cut with it. You can get two hands on it. You can choke up on it. You can do small work on it. You can, it's even small enough and the design is so good that you can even do small bushcraft crafting tax, you, tasks. You can make tent stakes with it. You can just do everything with it, pound tent stakes. It is such a versatile ax. Not so big that it won't fit in a pack. You can easily carry this in the back of your truck. It just does so many things and it's such a wonderful size. Just as an added bonus, you know, one thing that's a criteria for me to have when I'm talking, when I'm thinking about a forest axe, a forest axe to me is something that's going to be on my person that I'm going to be able to carry. So it needs to fit in my aluminum axe sheath. And it even does that. It fits in the Grizzly Peak axe sheath right there. And I mean, that is a nice tool to have right on the hip. It's always there. It can be pulled out. It can be used easily with one hand. I can, I can choke up on it. I feel comfortable. It is a, it's almost for an all arounder. It's just the perfect size. If you're not a hardcore uh, lumberjack type, you know, going out and cutting felling trees <laughs> for, for a living with a, you know, in, with a giant, you know, American felling axe or double bitted axe, which I don't think there probably are any anymore. This for the rest of us is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Let's take a look at it up close. I want to show you, uh, bringing them close. And I want to show you another kind of an American version, I think that comes close that would also uh, meet, this, meet this criteria. So while we're on the topic of my favorite axes, look at that. So what is this? This is a Collins Legitimus Hudson Bay pattern. This was gifted to me by my friend Brendan. 
He found it at a job site or a woman that he was working for and bought it. This here, look at that. Would you pay $3.95 for this? I think, if I had to guess, I'll bet that was the original price at the hardware store or wherever it was sold because this is the original handle. And how do I know that? Look at that. Collins. And a, what a handle it is. Look at that. I, I feel very, very fortunate to have this handle. Not that I'm going to use it, and I haven't decided, you know, what to do with this one yet because it's so interesting because it is original handle. I am going to make an attempt to tighten up this head, but the head is a little bit loose on it. But I don't want, would not want, ever want to harm the handle. If, if at least this will be something that will be a pattern for future handles because it is, well, it's perfection. It is near perfection, and the interesting thing about it is I do have the template for the Collins, the full-size axe from the same era, which is uh, for the for the three and a half pounder, and this really um, complements that to be able to have this because these, you know, think about it. If when you start making axe handles, what you find out is it's so hard to start from scratch to duplicate it because of all of the evolution that has went into these, and they were designed by people by men who use them for a living and they had to work perfectly with, in harmony with the human body. They're not just something that looked sharp. The axes that you get today, many of them by and large, are not designed with that in mind. And so these, the subtleties and the differences of the, from the curve to the beautiful, the way that the hand fits on the, on the Fawn's foot here, is something that is easily, it's very, it's very difficult to duplicate. Very difficult, but isn't that interesting? But, you know, the thing about this is, look how similar they are. This Collins Legitimus is almost the identical size as the Scandinavian Forest Axe. I mean, they're a little bit different. Of course, I mean, there's some differences you can see in the pole, but they carry almost the same weight. And even when we go to the ends, look at the, how close the handles are. They feel very similar. And this is, I think this would pretty much be considered a boy's axe. And the boy's axe is what I always re recommend to first-time users because it's of the things that I spoke of. It's so good and it's so versatile and it's easy for almost everyone to use, especially uh, for women. It's a wonderful size. And I'm not saying that to be sexist because even uh, myself, you know, if I chop, if I'm working on a big tree, I get tired with an American felling axe, my double bit, my sager. And I have many times put it down and grab one of these, this size here, to finish the work or to rest a little bit. So there's no shame in that because if you start getting wild and getting tired, it gets dangerous uh, and you start to swing, you start to get sloppy and that's when you can get hurt. So it's better just to downsize, just get something that you can handle a little bit until you, you become stronger or, or whatever. One thing that I have noticed with these, and a lot of people really like this Puget Sound pattern or Hudson Bay, this Hudson Bay pattern because I mean, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? No question about it. I'm not a, <clears throat> I'm, I don't think it's the best pattern because what I find with these is that there's not enough, enough uh, depth on the head and it has a tendency to come, to get wiggly and to come loose because there's so little metal that, come, that comes in contact with the handle. Look at the difference right here. And the thing that, that, that I think one of the, th the reasons why the, uh, Grand Force Brooks axes, they hang on the handle so well and they're so durable is this. Look at the thickness, the distance in metal that's coming in contact with the wood. If we come across here, almost double. You have almost double the surface area. Which one do you think is going to come loose first and to wiggle first? It's not going to be this one. They even take these, extend these cheeks down here lower to get more of a bite, to get, to put as much in contact with the wood as possible. And that's, I think, one of the keys to their success. So you're on board, you agree. Okay, that's the ax for me. It's, it will be perfect for my family. It's something that'll be versatile enough. So which one do I get? Uh, which one do I buy? Lots of axe manufacturers out there. It's getting to be more and more. There's some, even some, an American options, the uh, Council Tools, for example. They make a great axe uh, for the money, all American made. But here's my experience. I've got a lot of axes, a lot of them from all different sorts of manufacturers, from, from really specialized boutique handmade axes to, to semi-handmade in production and all, all of these. And the thing that I find with 
I was thinking about this before I turned the camera on. With every one of them, there's always been some foible, some little issue, and it's typically they come loose at the head. For some reason, they can't get that right. They can't get, they can't mate metal. Well, that's been the holy grail of man for, for thousands of years. How do you properly mount a big heavy piece of steel or stone to a wooden handle without it coming loose and braining someone? But the thing with the Grand Force Brooks is that they have it figured out. Here's a perfect example. Here's my small forest axe. Those of you who have followed my channel from the early days, I was thinking back to the Wrangler barn days. I bought this axe over 12 years ago. I've had it for, I've had it for 13 years, 13 years. And this is the original handle. And I would be safe to say that there probably are very few small forest axes out there that have been used and abused as much as this one. I mean, when I logged to the, uh, our uh, off-grid homestead, uh, I used this to pound wedges uh, when I was falling timber with my chainsaw. I have used it for pounding uh, everything. I have, I have used it way out of its design, <laughs> design specifications. And you know what? Is there a chip in the blade? No. Perfect hardness, perfect sharpness, perfect weight, perfect balance. And the thing that surprises me the most is that the head has never once budged. It's rock solid today as it was 13 years ago. I mean, what does it take to do that? I would think, do I have the ability to do that? With, if I take a week to make an ax handle, I, I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I, all the handles that I've made and taking all the loving care as much as I can, many of them, if not half of them, they'll wiggle a little bit and I end up going back and redoing things. So whatever they're doing, uh, they're doing it right. And I don't know if it's a combination the way they press it on or these deep cheeks on it, but they produce a wonderful tool. Every time I grab one, it's, you know, sometimes you get something and you just, it's special. It's just special. It's just, you can tell that it was made by someone who understands axes, by someone who uses axes. And the thing about Grand Force that I like that they do is that they don't go back and try to reinvent the wheel. They don't think, okay, we're Grand Force Brooks. We are going to design something that's going to be the latest and greatest. No, the reason why they maintain a, a, an ax museum is they go back and they see what were the men, what were the tradesmen doing back 500 years ago. They're gonna build a carpenter's ax. They're, they're gonna go back and say, what were the, the boat builders? What were they using? What did the handle look like? Why were these tools designed the way they were? And they, they, they copy that and they reproduce those. And, and that's something that I just really love about the company. One of my dreams in life, you know, that Mrs. W, of course her family is from Sweden and they live just outside of Stockholm. And we have been over there uh, several times and we try to get over there every few years. One of my dreams is to go, uh, I would love to go and tour the factory um, where they produce these. That, that would just be an absolute delight for me. Um, I believe they even run um, some classes over there where they teach uh, traditional log home building or, or I know they had some classes and I, I keep looking at those things online and think, man, what a great trip that would be. Wouldn't that be something to, to go there and, and to uh, look at those axes and see how they're forged and, and that all of that tradition, it would just be wonderful. Maybe we should start an email campaign. We can email Grand Force Brooks and see if they'll, uh, <laughs> see if they, they want to host the Wrangler Stars next time we go over there uh, for a tour. Wouldn't that be something? Take the cameras in there and see all of that. That would be really amazing, really, to, to take one of those log building classes. Maybe we should do that. Should I, I'll, put the e I'll put their email in, in the uh, subject heading. If you guys could uh, maybe we'll email them and say, hey, we want to, we want a tour. Give us our, <laughs> give, us, give us our tour of your axes, but, uh, uh, just love them. Yeah, they're expensive, but, but they're not, not for what you get. Because the thing, the thing about it is all of these axes that I've bought and, and I have a big old huge pile of them over there and I grab them and it's, it's just not very many of them that I grab and that makes me smile. It just gives you that. I mean, it gives me the, it just gives me the, the warm and fuzzy feeling and, and it's it's one that uh, you know how I really know that I like them is that uh, oftentimes they have young boys come over here and church groups and stuff that work we work with and we do stuff out in the forest and, and uh, I, I don't loan this one <laughs> I don't loan this one out I keep an eagle eye on it if I stick it in a log or something like that and I see some of them grabbing towards it I'm like mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you go grab go grab another one you not get you, you can't have it 
you can't have it unless you understand it. So if I ever do let you use this one when you come out here, know that I really like you and trust you. But uh, I wanted to share that with you. And uh, what a kind, kind gesture. Thank you very much. And this is it's just beautiful. It's absolutely a beautiful tool. Oh, uh, there's so much that I have. I, I can't tell you that we have um, uh, coming up this fall. Everything is just coming together uh, that uh, is going to take us out, and we're going to do a lot of um, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, stewardship stuff. Um, and I can't wait. I've been saving this one here, as special to uh, to go out, and it'll be a big big participant in that. So. That's it. So that, to answer my question in a very roundabout way, or answer the question, what would be my favorite ax? What would be the one that I would choose? And without a doubt, this is the one you want right there. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.